As gamers, we spend many hours, days, probably even months of our lives searching for online games. We're constantly looking at screens like this where we're trusting that matchmaking process to find us a good lobby with some bot enemies and some super good teammates so that we can go online and get another dub. We repeat this over and over again until we realize it's four o'clock in the morning and we should have gone to bed hours ago. So have you ever asked yourself, what is actually happening during this process? Why does it sometimes take so long? And why do I still end up with laggy servers and awful, awful teammates? If so, this video is for you. We're gonna be going through some of the fundamentals of matchmaking. And then what we're gonna do is look at a real life matchmaking example. We're gonna take the actual packet, the code, break it down, show you some of the visible examples of that, the technical side and how that impacts you as the player. It's probably something that you've never done or seen before. So what is matchmaking? Well, by definition, in its simplest form, matchmaking is the process of grouping players together for online play sessions. So here is a basic example of matchmaking, one that you'll already be familiar with. You have yourself, the player, searching for a game. You find one, it connects you to the game server, but you can't play by yourself. So then you have other players that are also searching for the same game type on the same game. They connect to the same server and eventually you see them in your lobby. So the real question becomes, how does the matchmaking process decide which players to group together? It looks to do this to give everybody in the lobby the best experience. You could even argue that the implementation of a good matchmaking system is critical to the commercial success of the game. If developers get the matchmaking wrong, it's game over, quite literally. So in order to get the best experience, it looks at three main factors for each player. Their location, their skill level, and the amount of time they have to wait to get into a game. For various reasons, it's not always possible for a matchmaking system to fairly balance all three of these factors. There has to be some flexibility, and that's why your experience will vary from game to game. Sometimes you'll be in a real tough lobby, other times you'll find that you're waiting ages for a game, and other times you'll just get some lag because it's placed you on a server a little bit further from home. Let's take a look at the first one, your location. In order for player actions to happen in-game, in real time, it's no good pairing me with players halfway across the world. The data has to travel miles, there would be a huge delay, and it would lead to a shocking experience for everybody in that game. Many games will do an invisible ping test when you first load it up. What it's doing here is reaching out, pinging all the game servers, and identifying which ones it can put you on to give you the best experience. Our GeoFilter can detect these ping tests, and you can see on screen now the examples for Warzone, CSGO, and Apex Legends. In an ideal world, matchmaking will always try to connect players to a nearby server to ensure a low and consistent ping. However, as you probably know from experience, this will often not happen, and that's because of the other two matchmaking factors. But let's move on to the next one, skill. Skill, often referred to as skill-based matchmaking, or SBMM for short, is all about grouping players of a similar ability to make sure the game is fair and competitive. In most games, you'll have a skill rank of some kind. In some cases, this will be visible. In others, it will not. Visible ranks are used in games like Overwatch, CSGO, Valorant, Halo, League of Legends, and many others. Your rank becomes a badge of honor in many ways, and beating other players to get a higher skill rank is a big part of the online experience. Most of these games will use something called an ELO rating system to do this by grading every player from the best to the worst. A more detailed video will be coming on ELO rankings in the future. Many other games will have an invisible skill rank where it looks at important performance metrics on an individual basis behind the scenes. COD is a famous example of this. While yes, you do still have your visible level in COD and prestiges and things, it will look at KD and win ratio, stuff that isn't public knowledge to determine and estimate your skill rank. So sorry to any of you out there that have reached max prestige, Clayster is still gonna eat you for breakfast. Whether it's visible or not, game developers will want to match players of a similar skill level together to keep the game engaging. For example, there's no point in putting me in my first Valorant game with Shroud. I'm not going to enjoy it, I'm going to get owned, and it will make me never want to play Valorant again. And this is why a fair and balanced experience is the main goal when it comes to matchmaking. Third major component of matchmaking is a short wait time. Nobody is going to enjoy it if you spend ages searching for a game every single time you load it up. In order to achieve this short wait time, there has to be a little bit of wiggle room in the two factors that we've already discussed. As you're searching for a game and more time passes, trying to get you on a good server or with similar skilled players has to be relaxed a bit. Equally, you may have just begun searching for a game, but there's a group of other players that have been searching for some time. 
instead of optimizing the matchmaking for you, you may just find that you're thrown into their lobby to reduce their wait time. This is one of the reasons why sometimes you can end up on laggy servers and sometimes you end up with, you know, noob teammates playing, feeling like you're playing against semi-professional players. It's very hard for a matchmaking system to constantly nail all three of these factors across all playlists 24 hours a day. Right, now it's time to see some of the technical stuff that goes on behind the scenes here at NetDuma HQ. We do an incredible amount of testing and an incredible amount of research to maximize the effectiveness of Duma OS and our very own R2 gaming router. I'm about to talk you through some of the findings of our matchmaking research, showing you the code and explaining how that affects you as the player. Now, this example we have here, hidden within the matrix, you could say, there's a couple of interesting things that are gonna to start to make sense. We've already spoken about the different factors that affect wait time, and you can see visible evidence of that here. First part, give up durations 120. That's referring to the time matchmaking is gonna take. It's gonna spend 120 seconds trying to find you a game. If it does so within that time, great. If it doesn't, matchmaking is gonna be aborted and the process has to start over again. Then you can see allowed game modes reach BR Slayer. This is referring to the selected playlist. This code is taken from Halo Reach matchmaking on PC where we're specifically searching for the Slayer game type. We spoke about SBMM earlier, arguably the most important of the matchmaking criteria. And from this, we can see two things. First, the game rated the average skill level of everyone in the party. Given that we were playing solo, this rating shows our own skill level. And as we've never played the game before, we had the lowest rating possible, skill level of one. Then there's the extra rating where the game ranks which percentile we fall into. In our case, we fall into the 44.6 percentile, which means we're just below average. What we're not sure here is if this is for the entire player base or just within our skill level group. It could be for the entire player base because the game may be thinking that we're a good player on a new account, so it's hedging its bets and will give us an average lobby to begin with. Now onto another interesting part. As all we are taking is the average skill, it's also measuring the different skill levels within your party. This is extremely important because a new player could be mates with the world number one. They could party up and the average rating for their group would probably get them placed into a mediocre lobby, which the pro would absolutely dominate. The noob would essentially be carried to victory by his friend and every other player in the lobby would have a shock in time. That's why the skill calculations need to be done in such detail. Calculating the max skill of each party member will allow the game to realize that somebody in the group is an absolute boss so that they can be placed in the appropriate lobby. So I hope this has given you an insight into what's going on behind the scenes while you're searching for your game and emphasizes the importance of a fair and balanced lobby. Variation in the three factors that we've discussed today is the reason why your experience does vary from game to game. Now, if you're interested in taking control over one of these features entirely, your location, check out our 60 second geofilter explanation video because the geofilter enables you, guarantee, actually guarantees you, doesn't enable you, it guarantees you that you can play on local low ping servers each and every single time you play online. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If it helped you out, drop it a like. If you found it interesting, subscribe. Future content, more of this coming soon. See you in the next one.